You're listening to The Ashley Lachlan Show. I'm Ashley, and I'm here to help you build a wildly successful and profitable business on social media. I created my own rags to riches story and built a seven figure business on social media in the midst of motherhood. And my passion is helping other female entrepreneurs do the same. I'm sharing my best marketing, mindset, and sales strategies to help you love the process and scale your business to six figures and beyond. Let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to today's episode where we're going to dive into one of my favorite topics, mastering your money mindset. I touched on this in the last episode when I shared why investing in your business is a gain, not a loss, and how time is money. So if you haven't listened to that one, take a listen to hear some really good nuggets about money. But today, I am excited to dive deeper into how changing your perspective on money and learning how to manifest more of it can change your relationship with money and your whole freaking life. So we'll start by exploring the stories you've told and continue to tell yourself about money. Then we'll dive into the scarcity versus abundance mindsets. Then go through the steps for actually reprogramming your mindset and bringing that cash money into your life. First, let's talk stories. What were the stories you were told about money as a child? If you were from a working class family like myself, Maybe you heard, money doesn't grow on trees, we can't afford it, we aren't rich, it takes money to make money, money doesn't buy happiness. And those seemingly insignificant and simple statements led you to believe that money is hard to come by. People with money are greedy and selfish, rich people are unhappy. Money is difficult to attain and it requires a lot of sacrifices such as time because maybe your parents were always working. Money will never be available to me because I don't come from generational wealth. Or I'll never be able to make money because I don't have money to invest or start something. Do any of those speak to you? Or maybe you grew up in a upper middle class family But that meant your parents were constantly working and you were left with a nanny or a babysitter most of the time. How did that shape your beliefs about money? How about your spouse or your partner? How are your beliefs and upbringings different from theirs? My husband came from a much wealthier family and he is much more willing to spend, travel, and invest money than me because Me, I am still trying to undo the belief that I'm poor and money is scarce. So a quick little background. I was raised by my dad and my great-grandparents. We all lived together in one home in the city of Pittsburgh, and my dad worked a lot. So I was with my great-grandparents most of the time, and gosh, they were saints. They were in their 80s, and I have no idea how, how they had the energy or patience to deal with me and help me with my homework each day. I mean, I'm losing my dang mind with my kids and I'm in my 30s. But my great-grandmother was a homemaker her entire life. She raised five children and then me. So the only income they had was my great-grandfather's retirement. And they kept all of their money in an envelope, cash, on the dining room mantle. And that's all we had for the month. So just that simple knowledge of this is all we have has impacted me in so many ways. And I'm, of course, very grateful for the life that they gave me. But my great aunt, she worked in the city for a law firm and she would work until 7 p.m. every night and then she'd come over for dinner. I always sat there and admired her fancy work clothes, her high heels, but her work hours led me to believe that successful people work long hours and they dress fancy and they work in the city. And every Sunday, my entire family would come over for the traditional Italian Sunday dinner of pasta. My cousins would come from their fancy suburban homes. And I always wished that I could live in a suburb or a new home like theirs. So I was led to believe that the only way to make a lot of money was to go to college and to get all of the degrees, which I did. But that left me living paycheck to paycheck, trying to pay off student loan debt. And have you heard of the, quote, Sunday scaries? That feeling of dread, despair, and depression that hits every Sunday when you realize you have to go to work the next day? 
Yep, I dealt with that each week. But when I looked around at everyone else, they all felt the same way. Everyone bemoaned going to work the next day. So I just thought it was normal to hate your job and live paycheck to paycheck. But then I learned about entrepreneurship, of starting my own business instead of working for someone else, the ability to stop trading hours for dollars and actually look forward to Mondays. And it's been a journey of intentionally working on my money mindset to get out of that place of lack and into that place of abundance. It's still something I have to call myself out on daily as those, quote, I can't afford it thoughts, they creep in. I still get that, oh my God, what if my card is declined, sick feeling at the checkout, even though I've built two insanely lucrative businesses and have more than enough money to pay for my groceries. So understand that the stories you were told as a child, the beliefs that have been ingrained in you, the things that you still believe, they won't change overnight. But I want to show you how to become aware of them and intentionally rewire your mind to live in the mindset of abundance and attract more wealth into your life. So take a moment to think of all the negative stories playing in your mind about money. Now let's reframe them and think of the positive stories, such as wealth creates opportunities for others, your ability to hire assistants, graphic designers, mentors, etc., Money allows for contributions to meaningful causes. Wealth allows you to donate to the things you care about. Money makes the world go round. Making money is great and spending money helps others and contributes to the economy. Money brings comfort, which brings happiness. They say money doesn't buy happiness, but research actually shows that money, only up to the point where you feel comfortable that your needs are met, does bring happiness because you feel safe and secure. And money is readily available to me. There is enough money for me to take and I don't have to trade hours for dollars to get it. Those are the stories you need to start playing in your mind. Now let's dive into the scarcity versus abundance mindset. Those with a scarcity mindset believe and do these things. They believe there isn't enough. There's not enough money. There's not enough opportunity for everyone. They hoard things. They believe everything is a limited resource and they need to take what they can get now before someone else takes it. And we saw this with the toilet paper shortage during the early stages of the pandemic. They won't share knowledge. They're so afraid that if they share something they know, someone else will take it, will steal it, will get credit for it, or will use it and be more successful. So they hoard their knowledge too. They are suspicious of others. They believe everyone has an agenda. Everyone is out to get them. Everyone is trying to one-up them or get ahead of them. They resent competition. Because they don't want their position threatened. They don't want anyone else challenging them or doing as well or better than them. They want to maintain the status quo. They're afraid of being replaced. They have such short-term vision. They're hanging on to their job or their position with all they've got because they don't believe there's another or better opportunity out there for them. And this is also why they feel threatened by competition. They think small and avoid risks. Because again, they don't believe there's enough out there. They dwell on the negative. They believe they aren't lucky or that they'll they'll always lose. They don't believe a risk could ever pay off for them. They fear change. They don't like when anything changes. They like things to stay the same at work, at home, and in the world. They hope others fail. And they might not even be aware that they have these deep beliefs. When someone else is doing well, those in a scarcity mindset worry that their own position is threatened. So they secretly, and sometimes without even realizing it, hope the other person fails. They criticize others. They're quick to judge and tear others down. Whether they do it aloud or they criticize secretly, they're always looking at other people's faults, weaknesses, and imperfections. They refuse to acknowledge other people's talents and gifts or give authentic encouragement, 
Sure, they might deliver a nice comment, but it's not always sincere or genuine. And lastly, they blame others for their failures. They are the ones who will be driving well below the speed limit and flip out when someone else passes them because in their eyes, everyone else is wrong and wronging them. They refuse to accept responsibility for their failures and they just feel better placing the blame on others. Whereas people who have an abundance mindset, they believe that there's more than enough more than enough money, more than enough opportunity for everyone who wants it. They are generous with things. They don't hoard things. They save things for others. They willingly give time, money, and resources in order to help others succeed, benefit, or thrive. They willingly share knowledge. They are eager to share what they know or what they've learned in order to help others. They know that what they give, they will receive. They never fear that someone will take that knowledge and succeed because that's their intention. They want to help others succeed and do well. They trust others. They see the good in people. They know that, sure, some people have agendas, but they don't dwell on the bad apples. They know that most people are good. They welcome competition because they know it makes them level up. They don't see competition as a threat. Instead, they see it as an opportunity to push outside of their comfort zone, to reach new goals, to be their very best. They strive to grow. They aren't afraid of being replaced because they know there are bigger and better opportunities out there. They are constantly learning, growing, and looking for better opportunities and ways to level up. They think big and take risks. They look at the bigger picture, not the present moment. They are constantly zooming out, whereas people in the scarcity mindset are forever zoomed in to their current situation and reality. Those in the abundance mindset are willing to take risks. They trust their guts. They don't believe in luck. Instead, they know that they are responsible for their own outcomes, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to make their dreams a reality. They take ownership of change. They don't fear change. They know that the only constant in life is change. Things are constantly changing. And those with an abundance mindset embrace change. They adapt. They're the first ones to master and leverage that change. They hope others succeed. They are professional hype girls. They want everyone to win, which is why they're willing to share knowledge with others. They see others succeeding, and instead of feeling threatened or hoping that they fail, those in the abundance mindset are happy for those who are succeeding. They cheer them on, and they look for opportunities to work with these other people or to learn from them. They know that there is enough room at the top for everyone, and they genuinely hope that everyone makes it. They compliment others and are genuinely kind and uplifting. Instead of constantly criticizing, judging, and tearing others down, those in the abundance mindset see the good in others. They want to compliment others in order to make them feel good. They want to spread that light and that kindness. And lastly, they accept responsibility for their failures. They know that they are 100% responsible for everything that happens in their life and business. If they get into a car accident, instead of blaming the other person, they accept responsibility and say, mm, maybe I should have left earlier. They don't place the blame on others just because it's easier or it makes them feel better. They accept responsibility and view each failure as a learning opportunity and a chance to improve in the future. So tell me, which category do you fall into? Scarcity or abundance? Maybe you fall into abundance for most of them, but scarcity for some. Or maybe you realize that you are living mostly in scarcity. I realized this when I first learned about the two mindsets. So don't beat yourself up or try to deny it. In order to change, you must accept it, acknowledge it, then be intentional about choosing to switch your mindset and move into that of abundance. And let's take a deeper look into the scarcity versus abundance mindset with respect to spending money. Those in a scarcity mindset say, it's too expensive. Whereas those in an abundance mindset say, if it gets me to the next level, it's worth every penny. Those in a scarcity mindset say, 
Everyone is already doing it. Why should I even bother? Whereas those in the abundance mindset say, their win is proof of what's possible. And no one does it like me. I can bring a unique approach. Those in a scarcity mindset say, I can't afford it. Whereas those in the abundance mindset say, I can't afford not to. How much time and money will I waste with trial and error? Those in a scarcity mindset say, what if it doesn't work for me? Whereas those in an abundance mindset say, it will always work as long as I put in the work. So think of this the next time you slip into that scarcity mindset. And while we're on the subject, this episode is brought to you by my Pivot to Profit high-level mastermind, which is for ladies who are already having success in one business, but want to create and launch something of their own. Whether it's a course, a membership, a book, something else, you'll learn how to make sure it sells before creating it, then create it, market it, launch it, and then finally scale it. The mastermind includes group calls as well as one-on-one calls with me to map out your individual plan as well as unlimited Voxer access so I can help you slay it. So if you've been wanting to create another stream of income and pivot like I did and have a wildly successful launch and double your monthly income, find the link with more info in the show notes. And now, how to reprogram your mindset. So we talked about getting out of the scarcity mindset and into the abundance mindset, but how do you actually do that and how do you stop stressing over money and start attracting it? Well, here are five steps. Step number one, get in alignment with your desires. First, What is it that you actually want? Are you clear about your money goals? Have you taken the time to write down exactly what your financial goals are monthly, quarterly, and yearly? And more specifically, what are you thinking about when it comes to money? The money you don't have? The lack? The fear you have over spending money? The stress you have over paying bills? Here's the deal. You get what you think about, whether you like it or not. The law of attraction states that what you focus on expands. If you don't want lack, stop focusing on lack. Stop focusing on the things you don't have, the money you owe, the money you don't have. And instead, focus on what you want. Focus on the money coming to you, the financial freedom you'll have, the abundance in your life. And most importantly, if you want something, you have to feel like you already have it. Visualize yourself having what you want, doing what you want. Feel what it feels like to live in that reality. Feel as if it already happened. What are those feelings? How are you acting? If you're constantly stressed, doubtful, angry, and frustrated, you're only going to bring more of that into your life. Did you ever have a bad day where nothing seems to go right? It's one bad thing after another but you're dwelling on it all day. You're going around telling everyone what an awful day you're having. My kids have this book called The Pout Pout Fish, and one of the repeating lines is, I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Well, when you're spreading the dreary wearies, you're just attracting more dreary wearies. But if you intentionally focus on feeling grateful, excited, thrilled, elated, and happy, you're more likely to bring that and what you desire into your life. At the end of the Pout Pout Fish book, the fish decides to change his attitude and spread the cheery cheeries all over the place, and it changes his whole life. So stop walking around acting all down and out. Instead, focus on what you want to feel, what you want to experience, and tap into those vibrations. And lastly, act as if it already happened. Set your desires and intentions and don't doubt them. Have complete faith and confidence that it's done, that your dreams will become a reality. This is key. Belief that it will happen and having the attitude that it already has happened. So step one, get in alignment with your desires. Know what you want and operate at a high vibration and feel the feelings you want to feel. Remember, 
You get what you focus on. The more you put out is what you get back. So stop spreading the dreary wearies. Step two, change the way you talk about money. What do you say and how do you feel when you pay your bills? Do you frequently say, I can't afford, insert whatever it is? Do you stress over bills? Do you get the mail and say, great, more bills, I'll never get ahead? Or, oh, it's the beginning of the month, got to pay the mortgage. Instead, send positive energy out when you put money out into the world. Be excited to pay others, to pay for what you use or want to keep the economy going. Be grateful that you have the money to do so, even if it's your last dime. When you pay for a course, a mentor, an assistant, or a tool for your business, don't feel stressed and scared when entering your credit card information. Instead, be excited. Trust that it's a great investment. Be excited about where it's going to take you and the abundance it's going to lead to. Remember, it's all in those feelings and in your attitude. So instead of being so negative about paying bills, hiring a mentor, instead of experiencing fear over those things, intentionally make yourself be excited and grateful and happy And focus on the good that it's going to bring to you. Step three is practice gratitude for what you have. If you want more, you need to be grateful for what you have now. Otherwise, you're not going to be rewarded with anything more. So each day I wake up and I silently go through all the things I'm thankful for in my head before I even open my eyes. And I always start with, I'm so thankful for another day on this earth, another day of life. Always the first thing. And then after I get up and I feed my kids, I sit down and I do my morning routine. And part of that routine is writing down three to five things I'm grateful for in my journal every single day. Sometimes I write an entire page. Sometimes I'll write three pages of things. But usually I'll stick to three to five things I'm grateful for. And... They change daily. Sometimes I'll write the same thing. But really tap into what you are so grateful for in that day. Maybe it was a whole night's sleep uninterrupted. Maybe it's hot water. Maybe it's the ability to shower by yourself. Maybe it's the day off or having a slow morning or the health of your children. And then step four is practice gratitude for the things you expect to receive in the future. And in my opinion, this is the real game changer. So I've been doing this for five years, and it's amazing to look back through my journal, journals, plural, and see all the things that I wrote in expectation that are now realities. So each day I write, for the future, I am grateful for. And then I write three things I want to be a reality as if they already happened. For example... I started by writing, for the future, I am grateful for earning $1,000 a week in my business. And once that happened, I increased the number. And I continue to increase it to amounts that five years ago, before I was even aware of this practice, never would have crossed my mind. So think about your goals. Not the big lofty ones that are going to take 10 years to reach. Instead, think of the goals you want to reach in the next month or six months. Act as if they already happened and write gratitude statements affirming them. Thanking God, the universe, whoever you believe in for making those a reality. And then as you hit those, as they do become a reality, it's time to level up and choose the next big goal. Now again, when you're writing these statements and then you're repeating them out loud to yourself, you have to believe that they are going to happen. It's that belief in the feeling. You have to act as though you have zero doubts. You have to feel as though they are already a reality. So just as you wrote the first three things of I am grateful for waking up today, When you are affirming things and expressing gratitude for the things you expect to happen, you have to have that same belief as if they already happened. You can't write something and kind of half-ass it and be like, oh, I think this might happen or yeah, long shot. I'm just going to say this. That's not going to happen. You have to truly believe it and feel it. 
And then step five is use affirmations daily. Affirmations sound silly at first, I know, but they actually work through neuroplasticity, which is when neural pathways in the brain change through growth. And in the case of affirmations, using words to rewire your brain. Positive affirmations also help release you from fear, worry, anxiety, and negativity as you repeat them. They begin to change your thoughts and they change your pattern of thinking. And this all goes back to the stories you are telling yourself or the stories that are playing in your head. For a while, it was believed that adults couldn't rewire their brains. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. But research has shown that neuroplasticity isn't just reserved for childhood, that it does happen in adulthood, but it all begins with your thought patterns. When you make a conscious effort to flip the script and continually tell yourself a different narrative, you'll start to behave in ways that make that narrative a reality. So here are some examples of affirmations related to money. I am a money magnet. I manifest money easily and effortlessly. I am grateful for all of the abundance in my life. I am open to receive now. I am attracting my ideal clients who are eager to pay me. I am worthy of unlimited wealth. So find affirmations that speak to you and use them daily. My process or my morning routine includes writing down three or more things that I'm grateful for that day and then three things I'm grateful for in the future as if they already happened and then five or more affirmations that I then repeat to myself all throughout the day. And to take this a step further, there are some amazing books out there to really help you master your money mindset. These are my favorites and the ones that personally changed my world. Uh, One is You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. And then the next three are all by Gabrielle Bernstein. May Cause Miracles, which is a workbook of sorts. It's each day you read something and then there's activities that go along with it. And the universe has your back as well as Super Attractor. So if you're looking for a personal development book to really help you with your money mindset, those are some I recommend and I linked them in the show notes for you. So to recap, first, examine the thought patterns and stories in your head about money. Are they negative? Well, how can you rewrite them? Next, evaluate whether you are living in the scarcity mindset or the abundance mindset and intentionally work to live in the abundance mindset. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And then lastly, in order to stop stressing over money and start attracting it, follow this five-step process. First, get in alignment with your desires. Focus on what you want, tap into the feelings you'll experience, and act as if it's already a reality. Second, change the way you talk about money. Be excited to pay your bills and to put money out there knowing that it's going to come back to you multiplied. Third, practice gratitude daily for the things you have. Fourth, practice gratitude daily for the things you want in the future as if they've already happened. And then fifth, use affirmations to rewire your brain. I promise life can be different for you. I am proof of that. But it all starts with your thoughts and being intentional about rewiring your brain and telling your mind what you want to experience. So get out there and make those money moves. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe so you get notified when new episodes drop. Take a screenshot and tag me in your stories and tell me what you thought of the episode. Sending you all the money vibes.